Hello everyone, welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Chris Hoy and today we are going to talk about my epic script liner and what makes it so epic. I've been using this brush for several years. The reason that I decided to create my own line of brushes is because I was looking for that special brush that would just absolutely be wonderful and wasn't able to find it. So I decided to create my own. I worked on the brush for a couple years. Um, I have quite a few brushes. So if you haven't checked out my signature brush line, they are absolutely awesome and epic and spectacular and wonderful. So today I wanted to focus mostly on the epic script liner. Let me switch it over here and we'll zoom in just a little bit. The epic script liner is a little bit longer than a liner brush, but shorter than a script. It's probably the best liner in the industry. It has an extremely long life. With the length of it, you're going to get a longer, smoother stroke and still have nice control. The bristles are a really high quality golden Teclon fiber and it has a long snappy bounce which makes the brush maintain their shape and it's gonna last a lot longer. And there's nothing worse than a liner that doesn't maintain its point. It's not even worth having if you don't have one that is epic. As with all my signature brushes, the handle is sealed on both ends. That way, if you by accident forget and leave your brush soaking in the water, it's not gonna swell and loosen the ferrule and we've we've all forgotten about our brushes and left them in the water so it's just it just happens so this will prevent the brush from getting ruined if that does stay in the water barrel water uh, bucket all night um i i think everybody's familiar with how a liner works probably the biggest secret on making sure that you get a nice long stroke is having the appropriate amount of water loaded into the paint so that you get a nice fluid stroke out of it. Um, I would say 90% of all the struggles with a liner are not having enough water to transport the paint. Um, pressure. If you press down, you're gonna get a wider stroke. If you lighten up, you're gonna maintain that thin stroke. To get a nice fine line, I always say load your brush well and stay on the point. That way the line's going to be even and slender. If you start pressing down or holding it at an angle, you're going to get a fatter line. Always paint most what is easiest for you, left to right, right to left. I found out if you try to pull it towards yourself, it's you're gonna struggle and it's going to be a little bit awkward. Steady pressure for thin lines, press for thicker lines. Um, there's a lot of different strokes that you can create with a liner. So I did a little video. I created this, I call it my epic wreath ornament and all of the greenery is created using the script liner. And I wanted to share with you today how many different strokes can be created using just the Epic script liner. So we'll go ahead and get started. I did pre-record this so that I wouldn't have to worry about painting while I talked, but this is a basic ornament and I did prep it with multi-purpose sealer just going to ensure that you have a nice surface to work with. Also, if there's any grain that is raised, you can lightly sand it and get a much smoother surface. And if you do have a smoother surface, it will be kinder to your brushes. I did base coat this with Almondine and I wanted it to look a little bit distressed. And I been using a palette knife a lot lately because I love the effect that it achieves something you can't get with a brush. It's super simple. It's one of those um, techniques that just require patience. So if you scoop up a lot of paint on the bottom of the palette knife, you're just gonna get a big blob. So you just have to 
smooth out a little bit of paint on the bottom flat of the palette and then just scrape it over and over. Now I wanted this to look mostly white, like it was chipped paint, and then that almondine base is going to show through just as texture. So you can apply as much or as little as you prefer, but I think it gives it such a, an interesting tech effect. And right now this farmhouse chippy paint look is so popular. I wanted it to increase the effect a little bit, so I picked up a little bit of charcoal gray, and that's such a strong color, so minimal. My motto is a little bit of paint makes a big difference, so adding just a light amount of this charcoal gray is just absolutely beautiful. And I thought maybe I could do the side edge of my palette to create that look of planks. And I think it would have worked, but with this small ornament, it probably wouldn't show up, so I didn't pursue that any longer. But just putting that bit on makes a huge difference. Now I'm loading my Epic Script Liner, water, 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 have that thin paint. I'm just staying on the toe of my brush and doing a squiggle. This is a grapevine wreath base. And you can see how fussy in particular I am. This will basically not show. This is just the bones on which the foliage is going to be placed. And I did use my fingers just to make sure it was even on both sides. I wanted it to be centered. It is a little bit taller than it is wide, but so is the ornament. And I thought that fit better starting with the pine boughs and I am just lining the center of branch just for placement and I wanted it to be sort of even even around and the wreath will be filled in with layers the first layer of pine needles I'm using the thin charcoal gray once the brush is loaded correctly, you should be able to paint an entire branch without reloading. And I'm just putting in thin, wispy strokes of pine needles. Super simple. Just remember that we're, have, we're going to be adding lots of layers of different colors. So it's not imperative that it be super solid in the beginning. And in fact, if it is, it's just not gonna, it'll look just too thick and heavy. Using plantation pine to start adding a little bit of green. There was, when you load your brush with a lot of water, always pay attention. There's always that little drip that's on the handle of your brush that kind of runs down the ferrule. And as you're painting your beautiful lines, it's gonna drip on whatever you're painting. Kind of causes a problem. So make sure that you kind of keep a check on the barrel or the ferrule of the brush to remove any of those water drips that, that are on there from dipping in the water. And it looks a little bit uneven, but you have to think ahead. There's going to be a lot of foliage. I'm just looking for a general evenness of balance of the pine branches. I'm going back in with foliage green, and this is going to start brightening up the branches and filling them in. I still am using a rather sparse covering because with all the layers, I don't want to cover up all that beautiful, deep, rich uh, background depth. And also it's going to translate that, especially that charcoal gray, it's going to translate as a background shadow creates that base uh, depth and richness on those branches. Now I'm adding the next layer. This is, I call these my boxwood leaves or branches. And I'm just kind of filling in between. If you've ever created a wreath with greenery, you just kind of have to stick it in where it's empty and same concept for painting. You, you see an empty area and you just put a little branch there. Now I am double loading my Epic Script Liner with Thicket and Foliage Green, and I'm just pushing down. 
and it's loaded pretty heavy. And when I press down, I'm going to get a multicolored leaf, which is absolutely beautiful. Adds so much interest. And also by switching up the colors, and we use plantation pine and foliage green for the pine branches. I'm using thicket and foliage green for the boxwood leaves. It's gonna change up that color, still staying in that green family. I did paint that center branch plantation pine. And there is a free e-pattern if you want to go online uh, to download the instructions and the uh, line drawing. I wanted to put one there. I didn't have a center branch in there, but I thought that's where it needed to be. And you can always add more. Next, I'm going to add um, a cute little branch of, I call it mini Ming pine. And they're just little clusters of pine needles. And they're really sweet to add more greenery to a wreath without becoming too heavy. And I'm using plantation around uh, charcoal gray to paint the center branch. And then I'm just stroking little layers of kind of fan shaped. Can you see how each little grouping is almost like a little fan of pine needles? And still sticking with that charcoal gray. These are going to be kind of quiet, but uh, quiet fillers. And you can see now my wreath is starting to get a little bit round. But anywhere there's an empty spot, you can kind of stick a little bit of foliage in there. We do have berries to put in there as well, so you don't want it too thick and heavy. Thin that paint, make sure you stay on the tip of the brush and just have a light, even pressure. You know, it's so easy when you run out of paint to press down a little bit harder. There was an empty spot there that looked like it needed a boxwood branch, so pop one of those in there. But it's so much, it looks so much better if you will reload, take time to reload. Load your brush well so that you get some nice strokes. This is a beautiful touch. I'm adding Aqua Sky as a low light highlight, if that, if that makes sense. I need more color in there to break up all that green. The Aqua Blue is just absolutely stunning. Putting it on the pine branches and just a few little touches on that Mini Ming. And you notice I'm not putting it on heavy just blending it from the base up a little bit. This is more of a shadow low light than a branch highlight. So you kind of have to think opposite in the, the darker areas where you need a little bit to break it up, but not yet um, make it super bright. You pull in those cool tones, it just really sets it off. What a huge difference that little bit of paint makes. Next, I'm picking up Celery Shoot, and that's going to be my highlight on the pine branches. And you can see how that all of a sudden turns those pine branches into a totally different color. Still the same stroke, just a light super touch. And I'm not reloading often. I have my brush loaded well. Adding little bits of highlight on those boxwood leaves just to brighten those up and make them pop out just a little bit more. Highlights don't need to be added on every single area because too much makes it all the same. Just a little touch here and there. Often I will go back and you look at it and you think, you know, I just need something there. Try just a touch of highlight or maybe a little bit of a stronger shadow. It makes a huge, huge difference. That is all created with the Epic Script Liner. Now I'm using the handle end of my brush to dip dot watermelon sliced berries. And I, you kind of just have to use your eye to see where there's little hollow places in the branches. They always say groups of uneven numbers work best. 
ones and threes, but I pop a little twos in there <laughs> because I think that um, just, just makes it not look too much the same. Balance it out, make it look nice and even. Now I wanted to snuggle those berries down in the wreath. I'm using my eighth inch epic or awesome angle. This is a brush we talked about on the last video. And I'm just kind of pushing that color in around the berries. And now instead of being on the wreath, they're snuggled down in the wreath. It's just such a great way. Charcoal gray is a gorgeous color. It's uh, when it's thinned out, it can be just a beautiful shadow color. And that's basically what this is. Make sure it's transparent. A little bit of paint makes a big difference. And I add it not all at once. I add it all around the wreath and then I go back and darken where it is needed. I, I never finish one area up completely. I let the entire design build together and I think it looks a little more cohesive if you bring all the shadows in at one time and bring all the highlights in at one time just really makes it look um, just a little more together. Picked up a little bit of deep burgundy adding a shadow around the bottom and the right side of the berries and then a little bit of blush uh, probably a glow from the berries on the wreath. Just keep this very subtle. Too much is looks messy, but just a soft blush, hint of color is just absolutely all it takes. Using my Epic Script Liner, thinning it down again well with paint and Snow White. Snow White, when it dries, is a little bit light. So usually with Snow White, you have to add at least a couple coats what I like about using this method to highlight the berries is once it dries, it becomes a soft highlight. And then later I'll go back and brighten it up using the toe of my half inch angle to add a little bit of shading underneath the wreath. And typically you would do this in the beginning, but I kind of like adding it afterwards because I know exactly where my placement is going to be. It's very transparent. If you get a little bit of it on the wreath, it's not going to show up. Here's where I go back and brighten those highlights with another pop of Snow White. You can see how dull the first highlight became, and now it just really starts to shimmer. My branches were a little bit dull. I didn't want this to look like snow. I wanted to add a little bit of brightness highlight on the pine branches just to make them pop out just a little bit and a few touches on some of the berry leaves. You can see it just starts to brighten it up just a little bit. And I know as decorative painters, we wanna go in and really add a lot of paint, kind of rein yourself back because this is such a great way to just add those little pops of highlight. And you can see I'm adding them here and there and then going back and adding a few more just a little bit to begin with and then add more. I wasn't going to, but I decided to spatter a little bit of Snow White over it. I think that pulls it together and gives it a nice look. And then to go around the edges after you splatter and uh, shade those edges, basically that acts like a frame to um, kind of close that design in. And you can see how it starts to frame it in. Now at the bottom, I thought it would be a great place to put a sentiment, a name, a year, um, anything would work in there. Went back and added just a few little touches of stronger shadowing. And you can see what those few little touches, boy, that wreath really starts to pop out and become dimensional. This is the way it looks. I love the stroke work at the top of this um, ornament. And I was showing my mom, she's 96. So I was showing her the ornament and she said, you know, you could use your liner brush to create those ornaments. I thought, yeah, she is on it, isn't she? So if you don't have this ornament and wanna create this design, put some stroke work at the top, really would dress it up. So we went through that really fast, but 
Um, Lindsay is here, and she's, I forgot to introduce her. We've kind of been rushing around this morning, but uh, she is manning the comments and the questions. So if you have any comments or questions, please post them. She is going to answer all of them, and if she doesn't have the answer, then she's going to pass it on to me. Um, I forgot where I was going with that, Lindsay. This video will be uploaded to YouTube this afternoon. Thank you. I knew she'd be on it. <laughs> um, so if you missed the video, you can see it. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube so you can watch it anytime. There is a free e-pattern on our Cupboard Distributing website. Lizzie will post that link as well. So make sure that you take advantage of this and you can paint your own. If you do paint them up, share them. I'd love to see them. But the Epic Script Liner is truly an amazing brush. Beautiful stroke works. I've been using my brush for several years. The same brush. It's not worn out. It's just a fantastic brush. Um, remember to take care of your brushes. These are made really, really well, but if you don't take care of them, they're, you know, you're going to have problems. So take care of them, and they're going to be your best friend for a very long time. Um, for those of you that are joining me, tomorrow I have a class. This is the Spring, spring Bunny. It's over here. And this is going to be a fun class. I used a lot of different techniques, so it's going to be a really interesting class. If you've not signed up for it, if you missed out on it, again, if you the class is only fifteen dollars, you get the e, it comes with the e pattern, and if you miss out on uh, the class tomorrow, it's if you sign up for the class, you get the recording. Not a not a problem. You can take it at any time. Um, some of the other things I've been doing. This has been posted on YouTube uh, or on Facebook. This is my new. This is Sugar Rush. I love painting fall and Halloween. Had such a great time with this one. Turned out really cute. So this is a pattern that's brand new. And this one I just finished up yesterday. This is Freedom Ride. <laughs> you gotta love those VW buses. For those of you from the 60s, the little V-dubs. So this is a fun pattern. And check out the bear. He's so cute. He's up there eating that red, white, and blue popsicle. It needs to be noted that that one is not online yet. Oh, that, this is not <laughs> online yet. Um, the pattern is finished, just waiting for the proofs, and it should go up later today. Not a problem, so, okay. I think that we covered everything rather quickly. Um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. As always, I'm always happy to answer any questions. But you need this Epic Script Liner. This is a fantastic brush. Um, it, it just does so much. It's so much more controllable than a script, um, longer than a liner. You're just going to get amazing results from it. Water, water, water Keep is your friend. Keep that paint fluid. The only time you're going to struggle with strokes is if you go faster, then that paint can run down the tip of the brush. So keep your brush loaded well, slow, even strokes, and you can do amazing, beautiful things. Did we miss anything? Okay, well, this has been a fast, quick lesson, but I hope you picked up a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little more fun and a lot less stressful. Be sure to check out my other videos on Create with Chris on YouTube. I have a lot up there and many more coming. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to our next painting adventure together.